Hey there, my name is David Rogers, and I want to welcome you to the Nashville Jazz Workshop's Artist Spotlight, where every month I get the chance to sit down with a handful of artists with upcoming performances at the legendary Jazz Cave in Nashville, Tennessee. We get to dive into a bit of jazz history while also learning about each artist's process of preparing for their upcoming show. This week, I got to sit down with organist Ty Bailey ahead of his tribute to Dr. Lonnie Smith and Joey DeFrancesco. We touched on Ty's discovery of the Hammond organ years ago in Seattle, his advice for pianists and keyboardists looking to get into playing more organ, and we even discussed the history and legacy of Hammond jazz organists from Jimmy Smith to present day. I hope you enjoy. We be podding. Ty Bailey. David Rogers. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> my absolute pleasure, my friend. In the I'm middle of four nights at the Ryman. Yep. We uh, made the time. Yep, just did the first night uh, last night, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Play at the Mother Church with some, some intense uh, chamber pop music. Man, and you're on that gig, you're playing organ yeah. and anything else? I'm playing organ and a little bit of synthesizer, um, just a little little bit of piano and kind of electric piano stuff, but it's, yeah. it's probably 90% organ on it. Which is fantastic. Awesome. And you also have a gig coming up. I do. Yes, I do. Tell us about that. And that's why I'm here to talk about (laughs) it. Yeah, 420. uh, My trio is coming into the Nashville Jazz Workshop to do a tribute to uh, Dr. Lonnie Smith and Joey DeFrancesco. Amazing. It is amazing. I hope it's amazing. They're amazing. (laughs) And if if we're anywhere near... Just an ounce of that amazing, it will be a great night. Well, I have no yeah. doubt about that. Why Why those two? Like, okay, what's well, the appeal? Well, okay, I mean, they're absolute giants of the instrument and yeah. the genre, and they both passed on in under a year, mm. not too long ago. And there's so many similarities and dissimilarities between the two that I just thought it would be a really cool juxtaposition. Mm. And there's no, like, jazz Hammond organ player that isn't influenced by, mm. by those guys. And it's what a wonderful excuse to just play their music, yeah. you know? So yeah. there were not too much bigger bigger thoughts than that. Except like, man, these guys are awesome. Let's yeah. let's just have a party and celebrate them. And that's that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm so excited. Since you moved to town a handful of years ago during during the yeah, pandemic, maybe yeah. about two and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I've been looking for an opportunity to 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 try to try to hear you play oh. a show something like this that honors the great canon of music from the Hammond B3. I remember the first time I heard Joey, it was his performance of a cover of The Champ. I just was so upset. I had to figure it out and, and yeah. transcribe his lines, and it was just it was mind blowing. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try to avoid playing an F blues. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the, that's just that's that's the the home base of Hammond Jazz Organ. Yeah, but maybe you know what? May oh you know what? Maybe we'll play the champ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember the first time you you heard? Did you grow up playing the organ? No, or? absolutely not. No, I grew up not in a musical family. We had a we had a piano. Grandma. Okay. The grandmas had a piano. Yeah. So I grew up going over there and and sitting there and zoning out for hours and parents thought something was wrong with me and (laughs) and so finally you know got a piano when I was younger so it was it was piano all up until I moved to Seattle in my 20s okay Seattle has did and still does has a actually fantastic jazz organ scene there's like four or five guys that we all drove crappy vans (laughs) and all b3s around played in bars for 50 bucks and beer and just burned it down and that's just what I thought you did Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 And so, so, so that was that the first time in your twenties yeah, when you encountered yeah, the organ. Yeah, when uh, uh, the first guy, there was a couple guys, uh, Joe Doria and Ron Weinstein. Shout out uh, legends up there, and uh, I would go and watch those guys all the time. And, yeah, and I was scared to death of the instrument for so many years. Why was that? Well, uh, this was back before like YouTube and stuff. It's yeah. just like, how does it even work? Mm-hmm. How do you turn it on? What mm-hmm. are the draw bars? How do the bass pedals work? Yeah, it was just overwhelming overwhelming sure and so i'll just go watch these guys and and try to figure it out and just you know i was scared yeah until i went and finally bought one Uh uh-huh an old a100 from a guy up in the cascade mountains he had a trailer house full of hammond organs and leslie's it was wild (laughs) and uh you know started banging my head against it yeah and figuring it out that's amazing i Hearing you now, I would never know that you started in your twenties. You yeah, know, I, it, yeah. I don't know if that's really common like or, or maybe not, maybe like twenty. It was kind of like mid twenties too. Yeah, yeah, wow. twenty four maybe. Wow. Like I was I was playing around town, uh, like Holland of Hammond, uh, sorry, uh, Fender Roads and Whirlies and stuff around, mm-hmm. and and playing different bands that way, but. Yeah, didn't get into the Hammond organ. In fact, the first time I played it, I got kind of thrown off it. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, so Joe Dory, I love the guy. He's incredible. But uh, he was playing. He had like a, a weekly gig um, 
with the drummer um, there in Seattle, and I'd go watch. And then one night he's like, oh, hey, man, you should sit in. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't know anything about the organ. I don't know how the draw, I don't know anything. He's like, hey, don't worry about it. I'll set it up. You'll get it up there. Okay. It'll be fine. And so, so they take a set break, and then a uh, uh, drummer's getting back on stage and other people. Uh, and they're like, all right, get on up there. And I was like, okay. And I look around, don't see Joe anywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. And it's just set up just catawampus. Oh, like, wow. like he, I don't know what he did on the last song, but it was just like crazy. Yeah. And so the drummer's like, all right, two, three, four. And we're going to sing. And I'm playing it, and it just sounds like a just a bad circus. Just yeah. like a, a nightmare. <laughs> and just, meow, meow. And I'm like, oh. And uh, we get through it. And then the um, the sound guy comes up and it's like, hey, man we don't really want anybody up here that doesn't know what they're doing. Oh, wow. And I'm like, yeah, man, you're right. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. So that was the first That, that was, was the first time, time I ever played a Hammond oh, wow. organ. Yeah, and it didn't wow. go well. Yeah. And and a, a couple year, it took a couple years after that before I just bought one and said, like, you know, I just got to figure this out. Yeah. So yeah. what was that process like figuring it out? W- would you listen to records, try to figure out? Oh, yeah, it, listen to records and okay. just go watch the guys play and literally just sit, like, behind them and try to, mm. like, see what, what are their feet doing? Yeah. What is What are the draw bar settings? Yeah. How does a Leslie work? And, like, this was before YouTube or anything. And, like, the knowledge was kind of gatekept a little bit back in the day. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the old cats wouldn't really, like, show you everything. Yeah. So you kind of had to work for it, which was cool. But now everything's just out there. There's videos yeah. of people showing every little little thing about it, which is great. I wish I had that, to be yeah. honest. But yeah, I had to I had to I had to fight for a lot of that. Sure. I get the question a lot from mm-hmm. from people, just kind of hypothetically, wh- where do I go to learn? Yeah. About the Hammond organ, especially maybe piano players. Like yeah. a lot a lot of cats come natural. They play piano or, mm-hmm. or some keyboard. Yeah. But they want to get into the B three. Want to get into playing the organ. I'm sure you've gotten that question a lot too. Sure. What, what do you say to to cats like that? Because you've kind of been through that. I did, yeah, right. I, I went through that. And, like, it took, it takes a long time to sound like an organ player mm-hmm. and not a keyboard player. Yeah. And I'm not saying that just because, you know, trying to be like, oh, man, you know, <laughs> you, you got to be cool to play this instrument. No, it's it's like a touch thing. Yeah. It's like a, it's a technique thing. It's a feel thing. There's, I, I to be honest, like, just get a physic, get one. Okay. Like, trying to learn on, like, a fake one is tough. Yeah. Like, a Nord, it's mm-hmm. just, like, because the layout is the, a thing. Yeah. Like, the the instrument and the style of the music de- has developed because of the way a B3 is made yeah. and set up. So, just getting a physical one and banging your head against it. Yeah. Um, that's... That would be the easiest way to do it. Okay, that would be the easiest way to do it is yeah. to get one and just sit at it for hours. <laughs> yeah. When you think about the the influences, you mentioned that Joey and and Lonnie were like similar in some ways, yeah. but then like very different in some ways. Yeah. And you think about the ways that they both contributed to the kind of the canon of B three music and mm-hmm. even the way that the instrument is played. Yeah. Over the years, how would you characterize those maybe differences first? Yeah, um, that's a fantastic question that, that deserves a fantastic answer. <laughs> but in uh, I'll, <laughs> instead of that, I'll provide this answer. <laughs> well, okay, so Lonnie and I, I have some stories. Like I got to hang with Lonnie multiple times, and I've had some had some really great experiences with Lonnie. Okay, over the years, he would come and sit in with my trio when I was living in in, in Los Angeles. And he would come out. I was on the road with Katy Perry, and he came out to a show. Yeah. And, like, it was a whole cool thing, and I was wow. so nervous. Anyway, I, I'll tell these stories. you got to come to the show. So <laughs> I'm not going to tell these stories. <laughs> Great. Now. But Lonnie had a sense of magic about him that he could just pull you in in the fewest amount of notes possible. Mm. Mm. He could just – he just – he, you know, he would always say he played life. Mm. And, and he really did, man. Like, the organ was there, but it was Lonnie. Yeah. And like, and yeah, I, I'll, I'll elaborate more at the show. I'll, I have a specific story about how he just changed the temperature in a room in a way that like I'll never forget. Mm. And he was just funky and like you couldn't, like Lonnie, you, nobody can copy Lonnie. Mm. Like he's just, his, his, what a special player, yeah. you know. Yeah. But like he, he would always just say like, man, if you're not playing with feeling, forget it. Always play with feeling, yeah. he would tell me. Um I mean, he could burn. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Lonnie could take it there. He had all oh, yeah. the gears, but like that wasn't what he was about. Yeah. And uh, Joey is horrifying because <laughs> he's all the organ players kind of in one. He was yeah. a student. He he grew up in it. His dad was an organ player. He um, loved it obviously, and 
could really mimic all the all the players that came before him and the styles in a in a absolute genuine way. Even though like he was himself as well, yeah. but he was a hot rod. Mm-hmm. He could nobody played the instrument like no. that guy. He was he was a force. Yeah, he had velocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's just what technique. That's yeah. what attracted me to his sound at first because yeah. yeah, I came from a classical background. Okay, but then here's this guy who's you know. Playing faster than any Chopin A2 oh, or, or anything, and just and, smoking, and yeah. so the clarity was there. There was nothing mm-hmm. that was compromised, no. and it's always just the equivalent of Art Tatum or an Oscar For Peterson, sure. but but on the organ, but on the organ, absolutely. And yeah, he's, he's doing so much with the left hand and, and, and the left foot, and mm-hmm. you know, like that's something I wanted to ask you about is pedaling, mm-hmm. walking bass lines, and I mean, you mentioned just wa- watching guys. Yeah, is there a standard way that that that's done? This is me gawking over. Yeah, you sure. Know, organ no, legends. No, it's it's a mystery. You, yeah, yeah, it's a total yeah. mystery. How does the left foot play into yeah. and, the performance? And, and like watching people sometimes doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was so much misinformation. Like Jimmy Smith would say that like, oh man, it's all in your left foot. And, you know, and it's like, no, it's not Jimmy. Um, <laughs> but like, there's a lot of misinformation and people kind of like blowing it up. There are some players that play all the bass lines in their left foot. Okay. That is, that is one style. Okay. There are guys that double whatever they're playing in the left hand mm-hmm. with their feet. Okay. And then there's the more the style that I play and more the modern jazz guys do, which is the left it's the bass line is in your left hand uh-huh. and your left foot accents it. Okay. Whether it's doubling it uh-huh. specifically, whether it's playing it all, or whether it's doing kind of like a ghost note tapping thing to give it a um to give it like a pluck sound. Gotcha. And it's not always just one thing or another. Yeah. It's just kind of like you, you want to think of your left foot as emphasizing your your left hand. It's not always doing what your left hand is doing because uh, that to me sounds clunky mm-hmm. and and kind of corny yeah sure yeah yeah because for, for those who don't know your trio or, mm-hmm. or a classic organ trio yeah. is organ guitar and, and then, drums and drums yeah, so no, no bass, bass player no yeah. bass player yeah, right get so out of here bass players <laughs> you're covering a lot of frequencies <laughs> yeah all of roles, it yeah mm-hmm. right Interesting. So, yeah. would you say that Joey and Lonnie, what they did, develop that process of the left foot? Yeah, at all, yeah. Or? I mean, Jimmy Smith started the whole thing. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Smith kind of was the one that took uh, the Hammond organ and brought it into more kind of like modern jazz context with okay. like bebop vocabulary. Um, definitely a lot of blues. Sure. But yeah, he's the one that kind of developed the style that like a lot of guys in the in the jazz world. We're not talking gospel here, too. By the way, sure. I want to. There's there's kind of two ways to go about it, mm. and and so the jazz guys, yeah, Joey and Lonnie kind of came from the Jimmy Smith school okay. for sure. Okay. Yeah, the less you stress about the the, I'm not the best bass player on the left footed bass player on the planet. I can do it. Yeah, but like no, the I've guy, seen you do but it, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, it's it's there's some real athletic players out there that sure. like make it their thing. Yeah. And that's cool, man. But it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like the stuff I like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when when you think about a tribute show and you balance this mm-hmm. is what you just mentioned, the stuff you like, yeah, but also the idea of paying homage to yeah. two of the greats, yeah. How do you go about making decisions? Oh, right? in terms yeah. of like song selection or or how you play? Oh, yeah. So you're gonna play with feeling. We know that. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a fantastic question. Um, something that has been wild uh, with, uh, you know, the internet. God, mm-hmm. I sound like an old guy. But, you know, growing up, I had what records I had, and yeah. I liked what I liked, and I didn't have any other people to bounce off for a long I grew up on a farm, middle of nowhere, no musicians until I didn't get into it till I was a little later in life. So I didn't have, like, a cool record store and, and friends that'd be like, listen to this, uh-huh. you know. So I liked what I liked, and that was kind of that. I didn't really care what people think. But now you can see, oh, Joey D has this one video that has almost a million views. This is a popular performance. Yeah. So you And you can see Spotify plays. You can see what other people has resonated with other mm. people. Mm. And uh, I need no validation about my tastes. But there's been a couple overlaps. I'm like, okay. oh, yeah. people. Okay, yeah. That's cool. So yeah. I'm kind of picking some of the deep cuts that I like. Yep. And but also being aware like this is popular. Yeah. Like these are the hits. Yeah. Kind of in in a, in a they are. This these they're those guys that's hits. So I'm going to play the hits. I'm going to play the hits and I'm going to play the deep awesome. cuts. Maybe even an F blues. May yeah, we might <laughs> You might swing it up, Blues. Twist we'll, your arm. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ty, thanks so much yeah. for stopping by again. This is April 20th, 420. 420, baby. 7.30 p.m. at the National Jazz Workshop. Yes, come and, on and, out. And who's joining you? All right. Uh, yeah, shout out to Adam McPhail, local local boy, done good. 
is uh, going to be playing the jazz guitar. Okay. And uh, love him. We all know him. Yeah. And uh, and my buddy Zach Albetta from Atlanta is coming down. Oh, amazing. And playing uh, playing some drums. He's he and I go way back and. He's a he's a big fancy touring drummer and he's just got a little gap in his schedule. And okay. I'm like, come on down, let's do it. Okay. The boy can swing. All right. Well, yeah. we look forward to some more of that swing on yes. uh, was it Saturday, Saturday the twentieth. Saturday the twentieth, four twenty. All right. See you there. All right. Thanks, David.